everybody, Scott Roberts from Explore Scientific. Last time uh, when we were talking about how to make astrophotographs with your telescope, this is for beginners or for anybody that wants to start off making astrophotographs maybe with a smartphone. Uh, we talked about the importance of, you, of getting perfect focus. And uh, so we showed uh, how a Batonoff Max works, uh, which is a fantastic device. But um, once you've got perfect focus, then it's a matter of keeping the object in the center of the field of view. Um, and a lot of times it's also a matter of tracking this object. Now, something like the moon is reflected sunlight and your exposure time is going to be really short. And so we can use a mount that works like this. It's just uh, what's called a simple alt as mount. Alt is altitude, which moves up and down. And azimuth, azimuth is the side to side movement. If you're a photographer, it's like tilt and pan, okay? But if you just simply try to follow objects in the sky using tilt and pan, uh, your adjustments usually are gonna be pretty jerky. Um, it's not gonna be very smooth. And even if you were perfectly smooth, the object in the field is gonna be spinning uh, slightly. So if your exposure times are longer, uh, you know, a minute, a couple of minutes, uh, you're going to start to detect what's called field rotation. So that leads us to talk about a different kind of mount called the equatorial mount. Of course, the reason why you need a tracking mount and an equatorial tracking mount is because the stars are rising in the east and setting in the west. And so if you look at a time lapse image like this one, uh, you're going to see that graphically. We have different equatorial mounts here, and this type of equatorial mount is called the German equatorial. There are actually different types. There's fork mount, English type, Ponset mount, so it'd be another example. Uh, but the German equatorial is great because it's so versatile. It's characterized by having a counterweight that's balancing out the tube, um, and we can move the tube back and forth to get the balance in, on the other axis. This is called right ascension because objects appear to ascend to the right, okay? And this axis right here is called declination because no matter where we go, we're declining from the pole. And so the, the job is to align this, this axis here with the pole in the sky, whether you're in the Northern Hemisphere or the Southern Hemisphere. So when you choose an equatorial mount, you're trying to balance the size of the mount with the size of your telescope. So there's a, uh, a specification called payload capacity. And a lot of people think that, well, uh, the payload capacity of a mount is how much can it possibly hold, okay? But that's not really true. You, you're an equatorial mount, most equatorial mounts can hold an incredible amount of weight. Uh, I've demonstrated that a couple of times myself. But where things become different is how much, how much uh, weight can the telescope hold and still have high performance tracking? Okay, that's the difference. And so when you're asking, you know, what's the payload capacity of my mount, the question you're really asking is, is how much is the payload capacity for astrophotography? Okay, and that, that is a, a little bit different question. Sometimes you look at specifications from different manufacturers and they will say, holds up to blah, you know, some uh, uh, poundage or kilograms. Okay, but that's not, really, that's not really what you're after. The question that you're after is the specification that the manufacturer has for astrophotography. We can add more weight to these mounts, uh, but if we, if we go past a certain point, the pressure between the gear that's moving the telescope and the worm wheel that's down here, that's going to change slightly, and that changes the characteristic of the tracking ability. Doesn't mean that it won't track, but how well it tracks. And so, now all of these mounts too have, uh, that I'm going to show you, have uh, computer systems on them. Uh, and uh, you know, from, from Explore Scientific, uh, that's called the PMC-8. And so we have, um, over to uh, my left over here, we have the iXOS 100. This is the XOS 2. And then I have an even larger uh, equatorial mount called the Titan, okay, which is uh, a Lasmandi mount, which has been modified 
to hold the PMC-8 electronics. So I'm controlling this telescope wirelessly from this tablet and I can either move it with my finger or I can also pick from a catalog of objects and if the object's up I can slew to it and just press a button and it's going to find it for me and then it's going to start tracking it and this is great because I get the galaxy or the nebula or whatever in the planet that I want and get it centered up in the eyepiece and then switch to my camera or maybe I just have my camera on there and I'm looking at my monitor and I see the image come up and at this point I can make fine adjustments to get the object directly centered and this is going to save you um, a lot of time because uh, you know in the past we'd have to do all this stuff kind of manually we had tracking but we didn't have computers uh, to operate these things and so this is the, the advantage of having the computerized system is huge so one of the most important parts of any telescope system for an astrophotographer is the number one is probably going to be the mount. It's not the camera that you own or the telescope that you own, but the mount itself, because this is going to be carrying the whole package and making sure that we have smooth tracking in the system. There are many other uh, fine things that we can do. We can have periodic error control. We can have auto guiding. There's a number of other elements that make up having a, a system that's really, you know, building an astrographic system. Uh, so what you want to do at this point is kind of decide what it is, you know, kind of work it backwards. Think about the kinds of objects you want to photograph. Then you start to fit the camera, the telescope, and, and, and to the appropriate size mounts. Mounts get much larger than this. Uh, but uh, you can do quite a bit, even with our smallest mount. It just, uh, you need to approach it in an intelligent way. And to help you, you can contact our customer service uh, department, or if you've chosen another mount, another telescope system, talk to the experts, you know, go to um, uh, those customer service reps or take classes. There are uh, astronomy and astrophotography workshops that are held across the country and around the world. But it's a fascinating hobby and by doing astrophotographs you're going to see details that you can't see visually. You're going to be able to pick up colors that are impossible to see by eye. By eye. And uh, it's, it's a fabulous hobby that allows you to share the experience. And once you've learned how to make a nice astrophotograph, then you can start to do science. And this is the one hobby where amateur and professional astronomers work together. So um, thanks for watching this. If you have questions, get in touch with us.